We Own Broadband Edition, presented by Vedantu. India, get free live online courses. Hello, welcome to the broadband edition of We Own Sports. I am Digvijay Singh Deo. Now we are in the fifth week of this special series. And today we have our first international guest on the show. I'm joined by Siegfried Eichmann, who is the head coach of the Japanese national hockey team. Siegfried, thank you so much for your time. Uh, how's it been over there in Japan? How's this lockdown been and how, uh, how's Japan dealing with the coronavirus? Many questions. Uh, first, uh, it's okay. Secondly, uh, we have a soft lockdown means we have a lockdown, but we are allowed to go outside. And uh, the government can't force you to stay inside. But Japanese are very obedient, so many people stay inside. And uh, every morning we get a message that we have to wear our face masks, that we have to wash our hands, and uh, uh, pay attention to the instructions. So that we do. And uh, yes, the, we have a rising amount of coronavirus infected people, uh, but we don't really know what the actual situation is because not everyone is tested. And we don't know who is, who is not tested and ill. But I think that for a big country as Japan, it's really controlled. It's not that huge but in certain areas like Tokyo and Osaka where we have the most uh, infected people so that's the no-go area for me. Okay uh, for you uh, what are the precautions you are taking as a foreign national staying in Japan? Well uh, not different than others. I uh, try to keep up with the information I wear my face mask when I go outside and uh, I stay as much as possible at home. So it's, uh, I do what I am supposed to do in the lockdown. And when I go outside, I always wash my hands. I clean, uh, if I touch something, I clean it. And I make sure that uh, I'm, I stay, I keep my social distance from other people, so it is okay. Yes, uh, that's, that's something all of us across the world are doing. That's one thing which has united us. Yeah. All, our, all our precautionary measures are all the same. There's nothing different happening in Japan or here in India. But what about your players? Because I've read that they're not there in the camp anymore. They've all, in fact, uh, gone back to their, uh, to their lives. And, and that's something which is pretty disconcerting to you. Yes, that is highly concerning because I have some players in the Tokyo area and I have players in the surrounding of Osaka and uh, the players uh, are supposed to go to their work because uh, if they are not in camp, they have to work and they go back to their companies and uh, sometimes they can't come to camp because they have company duties and then uh, it's goodwill of the companies to release them for our camps. So it's not automatically that they are free. And unfortunately, we had a schedule, but because the Olympics is postponed, of course, we had to negotiate again with the companies. And uh, as soon as they came back, uh, some players, they have to go to the office every day. And that means that they go to, into traffic, they go into the trains, to get to their work at the at the office they meet people and uh, so that's a part i'm worried about but fortunately we check there we monitor our, our players so we get daily the information about uh, their body temperature we uh, we have information of how they feel and we, we check everything which we can do eh? so we are not doctors but on distance, we check all our players so that we at least have data and we know from long time how they are. So if something changes, we directly notice. And of course, then we make sure that they go to the hospital 
more than to a doctor. But until now, that was not necessary. We, we had a few times when we were in camp that we quarantined some players uh, voluntarily because they got a, a light fever or a higher body temperature. And then we directly isolated them. But it was always uh, just a, f a flu. It was not something special. Okay, uh, interesting to see that you've got to negotiate with companies. Uh, back in India, it works very differently. It's, a, it's, you know, if you're called up for the national camp, you are bound to get leave. But that's the difference in, uh, in the way we work over here. But you did mention the Olympics. Uh, so, Secret, how has Japan reacted uh, to the postponement of the Olympic Games as a country? Uh, well, in two ways, because uh, when they postponed the Olympics, we hardly had corona uh, infected people. So we were hoping that we could control it and uh, that when time would pass, it would be okay because we expected the coronavirus to be on his uh, highs, high on uh, in this period, actually. And then we expected the to be in control when the Olympic would be. But uh, so everything what happened and the, the things we heard in early March when then that was when they postponed the Olympics four months before, that was quite a brave decision from Japan because of the, it means a lot. It's quite uh, economically a good thing. It's also about the Olympic village, which what is supposed to be uh, handed over to people after the Olympics. So it has a major effect and still, of course, uh, people's health comes first. So then uh, economy and uh, investment doesn't matter anymore. So I think they took a brave decision. Of course, it was a little bit forced by uh, some countries who said we can't, we will not come. but. Uh, in the past, many times when Olympics were boycott, boycotted, it still went on, like the 1980 Olympics. It always went on. So the fact that they postponed it was uh, positive in a way that people felt the relief because it should be, the Olympics should be a feast for everyone. It should be a huge festival with all smiling people and happy people. And Japan wants to show his best at the Olympics. So in that, that was something everybody was working on. And in Japan, people never withdrew if it's not necessary. So it was an early withdrawal. So in that case, they were a little bit disappointed. And on the other hand, they were relieved that at least uh, people's health was more important than all the other things. And then sports is, of course, a minus thing. Okay, That's that disappointment, as you said, will be there. But, uh, Siegfried, there is a phenomenal cost involved. It's already speculated to be between $3 billion or even more, just the cost of postponing the games. Global economies have taken a massive beating. And ultimately, it's going to be the Japanese taxpayer who has to foot this bill. There's already, we are seeing a tug of war, in a sense, between... Japan and IOC as to who pays that bill. So, has ha, have those discussions happened in Japan as to the cost of postponing these games? Uh, yes, of course, the discussion is there, but it's on the background because it's more political discussion. It's not among the people. The people pay the money. We pay our taxes and uh, our government. We have a, low, uh, a national tax and we have local and city tax. So the prefecture tax and the city tax. And uh, our governors, they decide what they do with the local tax, the, um, the prefecture tax, tax, and Tokyo area. Tokyo is a cosmopolitan city, so it's huge. It's about, I think, 36 million people. So they have a lot of income. And uh, the money is already spent. So uh, that's $3 billion is a lot of money, but it's not that much money that uh, they freak out. 
So it's bearable. And of course, they have sponsors and they have other things. And partly it's not fully paid by uh, the Tokyo people because the national government will also pay some money. Sponsors will support. So I think that uh, that's not a major issue. And of course, it's an issue because if you have many people, you have many opinions. So there will be some people who will be against it and will complain. But on the other hand, when the Olympics will be held, it will, we hope it will benefit uh, Japan and uh, Japanese people are also proud. So it will be okay. Okay, as you rightly pointed out, Japanese are very proud people's sake for it. But already a couple of voices came out last week from uh, people associated in the medical profession that in case there is no vaccine, perhaps the games will uh, not happen. But do you feel that there is a determination amongst the leadership in Japan that come what may, these games will happen, that these Olympic Games have to happen in 2021? Well, they have to happen in 2021 because uh, further postponement will be, I think, impossible because of calendars and everything. Then it will be finished. But, and yes, they have a determination to uh, uh, let it go on, but not at all cost. If it's dangerous for health, it will not go on. They made the decision, the fact that they made the decision four months prior to the Olympics, which is not very Japanese, because normally they wait till the last moment, and they did it now on a very early stage. Before in all the countries, Corona was peaking. Many countries at that moment even didn't have Corona. It was something which was going on, but was not a hot issue at that moment. So that shows and that proves that they concern about health. So I think that if it's like that, they will make the right decision. I hope, of course, that it will be held. And I think it will be held as well, but uh, it depends on. But maybe we have to uh, learn to live with it because a virus like this doesn't disappear. It will always be there. And uh, meanwhile, we have to find a way to deal with it. So at the moment, we are flattening the curve. That means that doesn't mean that it disappears or that we heal, but it means that it doesn't spread that fast, that the medical world is better prepared to take care of the people who are infected. So that's what we have to keep in mind. And uh, so everything happens now. It's only winning time to get our better organized so that we can deal with uh, our hospitals have enough capacity, our medical uh, uh, people, the nurses, the doctors, that they are in good shape, that they can work decently, well protected, and all those things. That's actually what it, what it means. Of course, if I'm not wrong, eh? and uh, if they find a vaccine, then it would be, of course, more easy to do whatever. But it takes normally lots of years before they get and develop a vaccine. But the good news is that now all the bright people in the world are trying to find one. So I have good hopes. I'm a positive guy. Yes, we are all hoping that they find a vaccine because I think what this period has also uh, made us understand is also the value of sport in our lives. We sort of took it for granted, but now that all of us, uh, at least here in India, I, as you said, it's not a complete lockdown in Japan, but here in India, when it's all of us are indoors, and as you can see, I'm working from my house and doing this interview, we are missing sports. So we're trying to give some sporting content uh, by having people like you over from Japan joining us. But let's just get back to sports since I brought that topic up. How does this break, this forced break, shake up plans of teams for the Olympic Games? Let's face it, uh, this, all teams were sort of ready and trying to peak towards performing in July and August. All that is gone now. Everyone's either at home or in isolation camps. As, as someone associated with high-performance hockey, how does this change your entire planning process? Totally. <laughs> totally. I was completely ready to perform in July. So we were uh, so we were very disappointed that it was postponed because uh, we were ready. 
we were really ready to perform and that means that we were in the final states of our preparation. But the moment they postponed is a moment of reflection and we, we start planning again. But we have a lot of worries, of course, because our group of players will be one year further. That means that we have some players who wanted to retire after the Olympics. Will they be able to perform on the highest level one year later? Is it, uh, can we play the same hockey as we wanted to do at the Olympics one year later? Because teams have one year more. That means that they can go more in depth, especially teams who are, uh, who, who, like in Europe, Western teams who have a strong club culture and a club competition. So they hardly have time to prepare with the national teams. Now they have longer time so they can prepare differently. They can explore new or other uh, opportunities. So the, I think that it, there will be many changes more because especially now, like I think all coaches are studying hockey now or many other sports too. And that means that those influences will be taken in the programs. And uh, on the other hand, it benefits us, us too because we got a physical coach uh, about half a year ago, no, four months ago. That means that we can now work on our physical fitness better and we can become stronger when it's held one year later. So it has positive things. Uh, yes, it's positive on the on one hand and on the other hand, uh, we were ready in the, in the setup as it was. And now the setup changed, so we will have to spend time on that. Yes, and that's, that's a theme, you know, all, all through the series, everyone seems to be telling me is that we all have to adapt. And sport is about adapting, but, but hockey is a team game. And I think individual sports perhaps adapt a bit quicker uh, when it comes to new routines. But also, when, when you talk of the momentum, Siegfried, uh, do you think you spoke about the club culture in, in, in Europe? They may get the time, but at the moment, with everything shut, nobody's getting time to practice or everyone's following social lockdowns and, and all that. Do you think that ultimately, you, we don't see too much travel happening between nations, considering travel restrictions, considering whatever quarantine regulations will be in place? So the chances of sport happening before September, October this year is a complete no-no. I don't think hockey can have uh, tournaments across countries at the moment as well. So do you think when you head into an Olympics a year later now, 15 months from now, it is also going to be a journey into the unknown. We don't know how teams exactly are going to be because there won't be that much competition to actually judge how good teams are or what, what they have been doing in, the, in this period. Well, I disagree. I think that I agree with the first part that the planning will be not before September or October that we will be able to do things. But then the club culture in Western Europe, they will play league matches again. And they will play many league matches. Then there will be, probably the pro league will start again. So there will be lots of comp competition moments. We have the Asia Cup, which we have to play, or the Asian Champions Trophy, which have to be played in that period. And uh, so there are, uh, I think, enough possibilities to practice and to play. There will be in, uh, if there's no Pro League, but I think there will be a Pro League, but if it's not there, then there will be international tournaments. We will have the Sultan Aslan Shah at the end of this year. So there are, still tournaments planned, there are still matches planned, and uh, many countries will uh, use the, the time more effectively to organize some practical matches and test events. Uh, and the most important part is now we cannot practice uh, physically, but we can teach our players intellectually. So we can work on team tactics, we can work on strategy, we can work on many uh, decision-making plays. 
So we can work on the decision making of our players because we have Microsoft Teams, we have Zoom, we have many possibilities to have team meetings. And uh, of course, players have their own programs. Uh, many uh, associations provide their high performance play athletes with uh, uh, fitness equipment. So I think that physically the players will be fit. I think that uh, mentally players will be stronger. They will have more tactical awareness. And if they have more tactical awareness, that means that they can take make decisions faster, better. The strategies which they want to play, they will, uh, it will be more easy for them to do it because many times we have a too busy schedule and you don't have enough time to discuss and to think over things, have examples, involve players. And now they have the time to discuss among themselves, to, to go into depth. So I think that that might be a, a very interesting outcome. So I'm looking forward in how uh, the game will change as well. Many different sport, sports on uh, YouTube, on video or whatever. And then uh, we can adapt things which are interesting and we can try other strategies which are interesting from other sports because we have a lot of time now to study. And I use my time to study, so I think all the coaches do. Yes, this is a, a, new, a new time for everyone. Everyone's sort of in the middle of the Olympic preparation and then suddenly this break comes and you know, either you can while your time away, binge watching shows on Netflix or Amazon like a lot of people are doing, or you can actually get back to doing productive work, which as you said, a lot of coaches around the world are doing. Uh, will this break for all national teams sort of help India? Because I'm not sure you're aware that India are currently, both the men's and women's teams are currently in a quarantine camp. They didn't disperse. They were actually in a camp and the entire camp shut down. But those camps went ahead. They are following social distancing. They are having their individual programs and they're all part of one bunch. Do you think in the long run this could help India? It could be. It, uh, it is an advantage to be together with your team. It's absolutely an advantage. Even if you, as long as you take care about social distancing, you can communicate and you can do things. And uh, the other part is, which we don't talk about, is that finally players get the possibility to recover. Because it's a huge time, uh, period in which players can fully recover, can become fresh in their mind if it comes to sport because they have some worries about family, friends, uh, especially in India, uh, where family is very important. So, uh, of course, they have worries. But on the other hand, they can recover from uh, fatigue, because if you are in a hard camp and you work very hard, then it's sometimes very good to have a rest. And uh, many times you see that players, especially in individual sports, when players were long time injured and they come back, that they surprisingly win major championships because they are fresh. They have more energy, they can focus better. So this might be, and this will be all over, but it might be a benefit for many teams who, especially those teams who have a very intense program, that, yeah, it might be an advantage as well. Okay, as you said, Roger Federer, let's just go back to Roger Federer. Roger Federer comes back from that break when he missed the last Olympics in 2016 and then, you know, 17, 18, he was a different player and he's still going strong. Just taking another break. He's not even losing any ranking points because this shutdown has uh, uh, unfortunately happened. So, it's worked out in the favour of some. But as you said, in, in other cases, it's not worked out, especially people who are on the wrong side of 30 for whom this was the last Olympics. But, secret. What do you make of the Indian team? Lots of talk here in India that this team is sort of on the upward curve. You saw them at the Asian Games where uh, your team won the gold medal thrilling match. I was there. What a, what a match that was. But uh, what do you make of this Indian team under Graham Reed? Uh, started well in the Pro League as well. Do they go into the Olympics sort of genuine contenders at the moment? 
Uh, yes, and uh, I must say a uh, lot of credit to Mr. Batra because Indian team didn't start now. Eh? They started 2010, World Cup Delhi. There it started. There is where Batra has his master plan and he worked very structured to get where they are now. He chose to get uh, coaches from uh, Oceania, from Australia, coaches from uh, a mix from European style. He had the best from everywhere involved and uh, he kept doing that, making sure that he has many different influences and to make a mix which it would allow India to grow. So this is a result of 10 years work and in those 10 years, they made st step by step, they come from, f came from far and now they are top five of the world. And it's a well-deserved well position. So that means that they are growing and all coaches had something to deliver in there. So Graham is recently uh, joined the group, but if you look at it, they managed to make the steps every time. At the World Cup, they were unlucky, and that's why they lost in the quarterfinal, but they were doing well too. It was not, it, it, uh, yeah, Holland was better in that match, but uh, only to one, eh? it's not a big uh, difference. So they were not outplayed. And with a bit of luck, they could have won as well. So it, it's very close in the, in the top. Uh, the Pro League, you see that they still continue making steps. And uh, they also have some stability in their physical coach. It's a long time involved in the program. Chris is also a long time in the program. So uh, they made step by step, they grew to the next steps. And uh, yes, they are. They, it's a very promising team. And, uh, they have a strong, that's also important, they win a lot of confidence by the better results. The Asian Games were, unfortunately, they went out in the semi-final. So not against us because they beat us with big numbers in the group. But uh, in the final, we, would, we were expecting to play against India and suddenly it was Malaysia. So we were not well prepared for Malaysia, but it's what it is and uh, we were able to win that one at the end so uh, happy I'm a happy coach but uh, if I look at the steps which India made after that they still grow grew and I think that uh, they have a huge group who is competing very hard they have a setup like in Belgium Belgium also have many players who are fighting for a spot in the Olympics. It might be that even uh, people who became, players who became world champion will not join the Olympics. And players who are playing in the Dutch league, who are their superstars, might not make it to the Olympic team because of the, high, the competition. Same is in India. In India, they have uh, a big group of potentials. And it might be that very good players will not play at the Olympics. That means that you get to a very high level. And then it's, of course, the, uh, the shape you are at that moment which will decide. And uh, yeah, it's first thing is to make it to the quarterfinal. And then after the quarterfinals, it's only a few matches. And it's a match to match uh, thing. So everything can happen. Yes, it's it's been a it's been a steady and perhaps slow progress because I've been covering hockey from 2003 Siegfried. I've seen the journey of this Indian team uh, pre 2003-4 right down to you know what's been happening now. But uh, interesting words coming from you. Thank you so much for your perspective. It's nice to have an international voice. You know, we've been talking to a lot of uh, Indian sports persons, many of them legends of Indian sport who have retired or who are going to these Olympic Games, asking them these very questions which we've been asking you. And it's nice to get a overseas perspective as well. Thank you so much for your time. And hopefully, uh, 
hopefully all this ends and we meet you very soon at the Olympic Games uh, in, in 15 months from now. You're welcome to Japan. I hope we will be, we will have our matches there, our tournament, and then may the best team win. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. We own Broadband Edition, presented by Vedantu. India, get free live online courses.